Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the book review blog. Today I'm going to review the book uh, Full Dark No Stars by Stephen King. This is a book of four novellas and to be quite honest I think the title is very appropriate for the novellas that are in this book because these novellas are very dark and where there may be some little light but it's you know ahead but it's very they're they're not scary exactly they are but they're not again they're not like supernaturally scary they're just really dark and really just they make you think and they just put make you kind of wonder um more about him i guess so anyway the first book or first story is called 1922 uh, and it Base, it takes place in 1922, or it um, actually it takes place in 1930, but the main character is remembering a time back in 1922. Uh, the main character's name is Wilf James. I believe his first name is like Wilfred. Um, anyway, but uh, in 1922, he was living in Nebraska with his wife, Arlette, and their son, Henry. I believe Henry is about 14. And uh, Wilf's and Arlette's marriage has just gone complete. There's no good things about it anymore, or at least as far as Wilf's concerned. And Arlette has just kind of beaten him down um, verbally and emotionally, and now she's taken that abuse on their son, Henry, where, again, it's not physical, but it's emotional and it's verbal. And one of the last kind of straws that Wilf and Henry suffer in the uh, hands of Arlette is that at the time, Henry is dating a, a woman named Shannon, and Arlette doesn't like her. And she's very vocal about not liking Shannon. So one of the things that Wilf does is he concocts this plan and gets Henry to help him to murder Arlette. And it, it's kind of fun because, this part, because like he thinks that um, that'll be like quick and that'll be painless and or that she will go without much pain and it won't be that messy and they'll be able to get it out, you know, really quick or, you know, carry it out really quickly, but, and without, you know, nobody noticing. But of course that doesn't happen with all the best laid plans don't work out that way. And so the first thing of course is that the murder is very messy where uh, she puts up some sort of fight and it's very bloody, but and with all that aside, it, it happened, and they end up dumping her in the well, like a abandoned well on in their property, and um, that's where I'm kind of going to leave with that, because, like, a lot of things happen, and we're, like, he, um, he thinks, he starts to think that Arlette isn't dead, and it's because um, she, she starts to talk to him in his mind. And um, Henry is too distraught by what happened because he's, even though he's a teenager, he's still kind of a, a, little, a young boy. And he runs away with Shannon and they run and start a new life. Um, and they do things which I don't want to uh, get into because, again, I want you to read the story. But, and so then it's basically just Wilf all by himself with this, um, these thoughts that he thinks Arlette is still alive. And he starts to see rats and he starts to see like Arlette come to him with all of these rats on her and things like that. So, you know, is this really happening or is he just getting crazy? You know, that's kind of questions of what to look for in while you read this book. So, um, I liked it again. It was it really, again, it was kind of dark. It was kind of gross again because of just how messy the, uh, the violent crime was, but it was interesting to read through, you know, what happened next. Uh, because again, there's always, 
you never know or you never think that if somebody is um you never think oh nobody's going to miss them if they're gone that somebody will so you know so there's effects of that nature where he thinks that this is kind of the perfect crime that nobody will notice that Arlette is gone because she it's it's more just the three of them at, in this farmhouse so but again he's mistaken with that so the next story is called Big Driver and that is a story about a woman in her mid 30s uh, her name is Tess and she is the author of a um, of a mystery series and it has kind of a cute name to it where it's like the housewives or the, I think it's the knitters club or something where it's like the knitters club mysteries and where um, I think it's about old ladies who of course like are in knitting circles and they solve mysteries so anyway and so she's going on book tours uh, to promote this book and going on speeches uh, speech tours to give speeches and she's in a town and her the woman who heads the speech in this particular town is a head librarian named Ramona Norville and Tess wants to go back home and Ramona is like oh well take this road it'll be faster and it'll be um It'll be lit, but it won't be as muddy as the road that you took before. So uh, Tess thanks her and goes on her way. So on this road, she happens to run over um, wood planks that have nails in them, which, of course, um, break or destroy one of her tires. And so she's stranded on the road, and she's waiting. She's wondering what to do, and um, this... She starts to move the wood planks away so that no other driver will hit them. And she hap happens on a truck driver who stops and helps her out. And so he, one of the things that he, or that she realizes about this man is that he's very big. And he's just very tall and very wide. And so he's just a really big man. And so but he, you know, uh, turns out to be friendly, or he starts out being friendly, and says, oh, you know, I see you have a tire uh, that needs fixing. I'll go and fix it. So um, Tess wanders over by his car while he's fixing it and notices that in the back of his truck, there are the similar wood planks that have nails on in them, like the ones that she moved over. So she starts to realize or kind of suspect that that these wood planks were put there uh, instead of just kind of flying off the back of a truck. And so she turns around and he's st standing right there. And he is like, well, now you know my secret. And now I'm go I have to rape you or I have to punish you. Uh, he says something different, but I'm not going to say that. Anyway, um, so he does. He rapes her and it's very violent because it's in her perspective. And... Where she, even though she like blanks out a couple of times, um, you can tell that the rape is very violent. And he basically like leaves her off the side of the road. Um, and when she comes to finally and gets up, she realizes that he has taken her stuff. And so she eventually finds her way home. And, but she's not a hapless victim where she just you know, went through this, uh, this horrible rape and goes on with her life. She wants, of course, vengeance and she wants to get back at this man who did it. And eventually things start to unravel where it's not just him that has done, it's part of this plan, but there's more people that's part of this plan. And I won't spoil that for you because again, I want you to read the story. Um, I liked this one that it was again very violent because of the nature of the crime and again it was very vivid um, I I wanted to look up um, their lifetime network did a TV movie about this uh, this year and I wanted to see it but I hadn't yet so hopefully I'll see it and I don't know if it'll be like the book the trailer of the 
TV movie was that I was able to see, but I haven't been able to see the movie yet. So anyway, the next story is called Fair Extension, and it's about a man named Dave Streeter, and he is dying from cancer. He's not like dying where he's on his deathbed, but he's suffering from cancer. And he's driving along um, the road in Derry, Maine, and he comes across like an extension of a highway and he sees a man who's selling wares. And he stops and he sees what this man is selling. But the next time that he gets to this man, this man is not really selling anything. Like he doesn't have, he has like a table, but he doesn't have anything on the table. And he is... Um, asking about that and the man's name that's selling this whatever is named Elvid and the Elvid is like oh well I don't sell wares exactly I sell extensions and where you know you if you want an extension on a mortgage I can give you that if you want an extension of you know a certain body part I'll give you that um, he does say that so it, if you want an extension on, you know, some anything, I will give it to you. Well, and he knows that in that Dave is suffering from cancer. So he's like, well, I know that you are so, um, suffering from this debilitating illness. I can offer you a life extension. I can offer you a life extension of at least 15 years. And... In payment, you have to give me 15% of your annual salary, and you have to give me the name of someone who you hate. And initially, Dave's like, I don't hate anybody, but then he finds uh, someone in his past that he doesn't, he's like, well, if I could hate somebody, or if I, if you say that I hate somebody, it's this guy, and his name is Todd Goodhue, and... So finally, Elvid is like, well, okay, um, the deed is done. Your, your life is an extension, and you have to pay me 15% of your salary. So Dave figures that this, is, um, that this is final, and he's like, okay, fine. So he goes on his way, and after a couple weeks, he goes back to the doctor, and the, the doctor is like, confounded because Dave has made a rapid total recovery of his cancer. And so, and again, um, Dave pays the man this 15%. Actually, it's like to a quote unquote charity. I don't know if it's quite a charity because Dave, what's funny is there's a point where Dave, when Dave is talking to the man and he thinks in his head, okay, this man's name is Elvid, but he, does kind of like an anagram of what this man really is. So, um, anyway, but, um, what, then he realizes that things are starting to happen as things are going good for him. Things are not going well for his friend, Tom Goodhue or his enemy, I guess. Um, and it's like a string of bad luck for Tom where like he has one son who, He's in college and he, I think he, he suffered like a car accident or something where he's left, a, he's left alive, but he's really, really, um, mentally disabled because of that. And there's a time where something, a fail, uh, an illness happens to his wife and the list goes on, which I won't tell you everything, but one of the things that I, I liked about the book is that it's, it's different. The ending is different than you would imagine it would be, which is part of the darkness of it. Um, it. Once you read the story, you may think, oh, it's going to end this way, but it doesn't. It ends a completely different way. So that's what I liked about it, and I hope that when you read it, you'll like the ending. Um, the last story in this series is called A Good Marriage, and if that's sounds familiar they just did a movie about it and in all honesty the movie and the book are very similar like similarly where if you haven't what or if you haven't read the book but seen the movie it's basically along the same plot um although i do again want you to read the book 
Um, the book is about a couple named Bob and Darcy Anderson, and they've been married for 25 years. I think in the book it's 27 years. And they seem to have what Darcy would call a good marriage, where, yes, they have secrets between them, but every marriage kind of does. And, but they know almost everything about each other, except for these, like, little secrets. But these secrets are, in most cases, very harmless. Well, in Darcy and Bob's uh, marriage, Bob's secret is very harmful, where Darcy comes across one of a box in the garage full of Bob's secrets. And one of and the major secret is, is that um, Bob has been, over the years, raping and torturing women. And he's known as a serial killer, uh, and he's been killing these women too, I'm sorry. He's known as the serial killer BD. Uh, the total title is B-E-A-D-I-E, -E, and it's been all over the news, you know, every so often. I mean, he doesn't do it like every, every he doesn't do it all at once. He'll stretch it out. I think it's been stretched for like a 15 year period for these women and I think there's maybe 10 or 11 women that it's happened to and the most recent the one that Darcy finds out about is um, a woman that this happened to uh, three months prior so and what Bob does is he will take their the women's identification and he will mail it to the cops and with the note that is entitled BD. So, um, and now Darcy is realized is trying to figure out what to do with this information. And Bob finds out that Darcy knows. And now he, you know, they're trying to figure out again, what to do about this situation because yes, honestly, Darcy could go to the cops and she should go to the police, but now she's thinking of the ramifications because again, they do have uh, two children, which would be affected, and they're grown, so they're beginning their lives as individuals. And so she's afraid that this, in the news, will ruin their reputations and ruin whatever they're trying to accomplish on their own growing up. So, um, I'm, again, I'm not going to tell you what happens because I want you to read the book. Again, I... Uh, well, you know, it's funny because I really didn't like the movie, but I'm trying to remember if I didn't like it because of, like, the acting or if I just didn't like the story itself. Uh, again, it was very dark because that was kind of the nature of the book. So, um, anyway, that's the book, the Full Dark, No Stars. I'm sorry, I was going to say something else completely, completely different. Excuse me. The next story that I'm going to read is another novella. And it's called Throttle. And it's by both Stephen King and his son, Joe Hill. So I will read that. And I bid you all farewell and happy reading.